here we go again Sunday has arrived once more live from much Wenlock in England on a Sunday afternoon this is live English yes it sure is baby here we go again Do, 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 do. It's Sunday. It's a fun day. It's time to improve your English. Yes, it is. Once more, live English for a Sunday afternoon. But of course, it is no ordinary Sunday because it is the Sunday that sees the Christmas tree being put up. Yes. In the second hour of today's live stream, I will be putting up the Christmas tree and Mr. Steve will be here as well helping me. At least I think he will be helping me. So here is the scene at the moment. That is the place in which we will be in the second hour of the live stream. You can see the fire is burning away because it's quite cold at the moment. Having said that, there is no snow. We have no snow at the moment, but it is quite, quite chilly. So we have the fire going and in the corner you can see there is a large space. And in that space there will be, <laughs> hopefully, by the end of today's live stream, there will be a Christmas tree in the corner of the, uh, the room. I hope so. I hope so. So that's all I can say for now. Of course, this is live, so anything can happen, to be honest. So here we go. I hope your Sunday is going quite well. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Well, are you happy? I really hope so. Sunday afternoon and it is the 16th of December. We are just a few days away from Christmas. Of course, we will be here next Sunday. I will say it now. We will be here next Sunday and every Sunday. Next Sunday will be Christmas Eve Eve. I will explain what that means. So it is the day before the day before Christmas. <laughs> so it's Christmas Eve Eve next Sunday and we will be here with you to help get everything underway, to, to help you get in the festive mood. Are you excited for those who celebrate Christmas? Of course, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, you are more than welcome to join in with the live chat and also the live stream as well, because it doesn't matter. Everyone here is very friendly and you are all welcome to join in. So live English every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. There is no excuse now for not knowing when I am on. Also, let's look out the window. It is a rather dull, dismal day <laughs> dull dismal dull and dismal I love that word even though it's a very negative word it's very expressive if something is dismal it means it is dull it is terrible it is lifeless it is dark it is damp it is dismal so there is the view outside the window at the moment. You can see it's not very sunny, very cloudy, very overcast at the moment here in England. I don't know what the weather is where you are, what it is like, but I hope it is nice. Mr. Steve will be here later on after half past two 
and after three o'clock we will be going into the living room and we will be putting up the Christmas tree now if you remember last year we did a special live stream showing showing us putting up the Christmas tree now I'm not sure if we were doing that this year to be honest so here I am with Mr. Steve last year so this is what we did last year you can see that I am in the living room and this is one year ago and there's Mr. Steve peeping around the corner so this is not today this is not something that's happening today this is last year and there is Mr. Steve <laughs> looking rather happy there and the one thing I've noticed is I look very slim so one year ago I was looking very slim very fit I look a little bit overweight at the moment although having said that I am losing weight everyone I have lost a little bit more weight although I'm slightly worried that I will be putting on all of that extra weight over Christmas so I hope not so there you can see last year's live stream that we did with Mr. Steve there he is <laughs> looking very very happy <laughs> and we did put the Christmas tree up together and we will be doing the same thing today so I hope you will be looking forward to seeing that and if you remember last year it was very chaotic quite a few things went wrong and I have a feeling that quite a few things will go wrong today as well all of that remains to be seen the Christmas lights are now up and working outside the house would you like to have a look at the lovely Christmas lights because outside the house it is looking very festive at the moment So there they are the Christmas lights are now twinkling outside the house I hope you enjoyed that we might have another look at that later on because I don't know about you but I love looking at the Christmas lights uh, I might be even addicted to them I think so let's have a look at some lovely messages that we've had this week oh let's have a look shall we Greetings Mr. Duncan I have watched some of your English teaching videos on the internet it's great and I like the way you teach it is awesome thank you for your efforts I was wondering if you could kindly tell me how to use the adjective off-putting in some example sentences thank you Emil Emil where are you watching I don't know but thank you very much for that lovely message Emil if something is off-putting it means it discourages you from something so maybe a certain smell or a certain sound can be off-putting it means it makes you dislike something so that one aspect makes you dislike something you might say I bought some cheese last week it tastes very nice but I find the smell very off-putting very off-putting it means it makes you dislike the thing in question so in this case it is the cheese 
so maybe you like the cheese because of its taste but maybe you dislike the smell so you find the smell of the cheese very off-putting it is off-putting so thank you very much for that question another email oh we've we've had a lot of emails today thank you very much for all of your lovely emails here's another one hello mr duncan first time writing to you in your chat on the tw on the 11th of december i noticed mr steve was in chester yes on tuesday on tuesday mr steve was in chester and that's the reason why i was on my own during my live stream on tuesday so on tuesday i was actually outside in the place in which i live and there you can see so that is an excerpt from tuesday's live stream so thanks for mentioning that palmyra i was on tuesday in much when lockdown center doing a live stream mr steve wasn't there unfortunately and the reason why he was absent is because he was working so there was no mr steve there was just me on tuesday during the live stream also palmyra says i have some photographs to show you of chester p.s my husband lost his cap in the pub where we were having a cup of coffee we are hoping to return to this place have you ever been to chester zoo well i've never been to chester zoo having said that i have been to chester and palmyra also sends some nice pictures shall we have a look at some of palmyra's pictures so these are some photographs that palmyra took during the trip to chester and it is a very beautiful place with some very nice buildings a lot of ancient buildings can be found in chester and there is another one and of course chester was in the news yesterday because there was a fire at chester zoo and there you can see it there is a photograph of the fire that occurred yesterday at chester zoo let's have another look at a picture of chester zoo and there it is the blaze which took place yesterday it occurred yesterday and firefighters there were lots of firemen and fire ladies putting out the fire fortunately all the animals escaped unhurt so that's good so there you can see the fire that was raging yesterday raging at chester zoo thank you also to palmyra for your lovely message and your photographs and i hope that one day you will find your husband's cap maybe it will turn up somewhere unexpectedly who knows i remember once i went to wales with mr steve and we had a lovely day i think it was in barmouth a place called barmouth a few years ago and i left my umbrella in a cafe i i, I left it there and we came all the way back home and upon returning home i realized that i had left my umbrella in the cafe so what did i do i phoned the cafe and they had my umbrella and they said give us your address we will send your umbrella back to you amazing they didn't charge for the postage they didn't charge me anything so they they wrapped the umbrella up and they they posted it back to me so i received my umbrella in the post between you and me i often lose things i am i am one of those people who often loses things i lose gloves i lose hats i often lose my umbrella in fact in my life i have lost count of how many umbrellas i've lost over the years let's just say it's lots 
have you ever lost anything have you ever lost anything valuable maybe something that was very valuable or important to you maybe you you lost your phone perhaps you left your phone somewhere maybe on the train or maybe in a hotel you were staying at or maybe you lost it on the beach or perhaps you dropped it down the toilet it does happen some people can and have dropped their mobile phones down the toilet because quite often I don't know about you but I do it sometimes when I'm sitting on the toilet I like to I like to look at the the, the internet I like to look at some photographs I don't know why if I look at nature pictures especially pictures of nature I find it relaxes me and it allows me to complete the business that I'm doing sitting on the toilet so sometimes people drop their mobile phones down the toilet have you ever done that my mother did it once my mum once dropped her mobile phone down the toilet I'm not joking I wish I was <gasps> Mr Steve will be here in around about seven minutes time we have words to do with trees words to do with Christmas trees words to do with things that you put on a Christmas tree in the second hour we will be doing a live chat because we are going to put the Christmas tree up and there you can see at the moment in the living room that is where we will be after three o'clock what will happen who knows because it's live and anything can happen anything at all let's have a look at something that I filmed last year because we had lots of snow last year do you remember last year we had a lot of snow and last year my poor Christmas lights last year were covered in snow do you remember this so one year ago we had lots of snow and my poor Christmas lights were covered with freezing snow and sadly many of the lights were actually destroyed so quite a few of the lights were actually destroyed they were damaged by the snow unfortunately as for this year we haven't had any snow yet we are patiently waiting for the snow to arrive let's have a look at the live chat because that is why we are here to talk live and to improve your listening skills yes it's Sunday it's a fun day it's time to improve your English so let's go back to the start of today's live chat I wonder who was first on the live chat let's have a look shall we oh I see oh very interesting a very interesting chain of events taking place on the live chat let's have a look shall we so first of all in first place today Julia Julia I think you have a very quick finger a very fast finger so well done you are first on the live chat and of course you get a round of applause <laughs> congratulations to Julia also we have matrix and also garden feed the soul oh yes they do hello to Malta and gardens feed the soul nice to see you and I love your name by the way Tom Eck is here hello to you Alam Gia, Olga hello Olga nice to see you here once again also Amtel hello Amtel hello to Zena hi Zena nice to see you as well also Matrix is here Simona hi Simona welcome to the live chat and we are just a few days away from Christmas I think it's about nine days nine days till Christmas <gasps> are you looking forward to it I know I am we also have Sarah Lilia hello Lilia 
welcome once again and a lot of people were very interested in the video that you sent last week we had quite a quite a big response to your video so maybe you could make another one for us so i think lilia might might have a bit of a fan club now i think so of gun is here as well hi to you also pedro hi pedro nice to see you again and don't forget pedro is one of my moderators making sure that everything is okay on the live chat maria hello maria maria giovanna oh i have a video sent in by you and i will be showing that a little bit later on lolly lolly says a big bonjour from france it's all going on at the moment in france isn't it lots of things happening not not good things either julie g says hello blue thunder is here as well also jeff hello jeff i haven't seen you for a long time where have you been we've all been missing you every week people have been saying where's jeff where's jeff in florida so jeff is here that's good nice to see you hello mr duncan and classmates palmyra is here yes palmyra thank you very much for your lovely photographs also to maria as well once again and sue cat is here hello sue cat i will be showing some photographs in a few moments sent in by sue cat also we have alexandra hello mr duncan it's martha from poland my previous account was blocked i wonder why alexandra you are more than welcome so otherwise known as martha from poland is now alexandra also amtel cesaro also hiroko 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 tani watching in malaysia a country that i'm very familiar with also anna dung Nguyen. where is belarusia i haven't seen belarusia yet where is belarusia has anyone seen her jc geordie is here also hassan hello dears mr duncan and mr steve in the wonderful heart of england i am keen on your lessons spreading kindness throughout the world thank you jc geordie for that louis mendez is here also oh belarusia there she is hello belarusia also a moderator on the live chat francisco and we are almost up to date with the live chat sukat burlop hello burlop nice to see you as well thank you very much for your donation by the way it's very kind of you and also blue thunder is here jamelia and Beatriz. it's a very busy one today i must admit we, we, we are having a very busy one today also amdk watching in morocco geo life watching in minsk and yuri watching in ukraine and caroline watching in france so many people on the live chat it's a busy one today let's have a look at something that i did a few years ago would you like to take a visit to the much wenlock christmas fair now a few days ago i did a special a special video this year from the much wenlock christmas fair but the one thing we were missing was the the christmas lights being turned on so i felt a bit sad about that so let's have a look at an excerpt from one of my december drop-ins and this was filmed in the place in which i live much wenlock oh hello there 
Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. Here I am again with another December drop-in. How are you on this fine day? Are you okay? Are you fine and happy? I hope so. Well, Christmas is definitely on the way. And as if we needed reminding, here I am in my hometown of Much Wenlock. And can you see what's happening behind me? It's all going on today because here they are holding a Christmas fair. Well, the crowds are out today for the Much Wenlock Christmas Fair. During any special festival or time of year, fairs are held. The tradition of holding village fairs goes back hundreds of years. These events give local people a chance to get together and it serves as a great opportunity for farmers and other traders to show off their produce and wares. The local fair also allows money to be raised. These days, many charities can be found collecting for their causes at local fairs. It is interesting to note that the word produce can be used as a verb or a noun. To make something is produce. The thing grown or cultivated is produce. The spelling of fair is the old-fashioned spelling of fair. These days the word is rarely used in its archaic or old form, except during these occasions. There are many things on sale here today. Tea and sandwiches, burgers and hot dogs and other hot refreshments are on sale here today. These hats caught my eye, and you know how much I like hats. The focal point of today's fair will be the switching on of the Christmas lights. Many people will gather in the square for the switching on ceremony. There are lots of interesting things to do and see here today. This man is called a town crier. A crier is a person who is employed by a local council to make public announcements. These days the role of a town crier is mainly ceremonial. They are only present during special events. In the past, a town crier would announce local events and court of law decisions in a very loud voice. That is why they are called a crier. To cry can mean to shed tears and weep, or it can be used to express shouting, yelling and calling out. This man is busking. A busker is a person who performs in a public place. This busker is playing several musical instruments at the same time. He is performing as a one-man band. Quite often people will give money to the busker as he or she performs. That is how a busker makes a living. Small donations are given by the audience. These days buskers also help to raise money for charity. They are also known as street performers. Many festive events are taking place during the run-up to Christmas. The word festive refers to a happy celebration, a jolly time. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was a little trip to the uh, Much Well Not Christmas Fair, something that I did about three years ago. Uh, in fact, longer than that. I didn't realise it was such a long time ago. So we are preparing to go into the 
living room we will be doing this after three o'clock and you can see it's all ready <laughs> I'm not sure how well it will go or what will actually happen but we will see we will see what happens well you know what's happening now we all know what's happening now it is time for something special that happens every week yes he is here again it's Mr Steve Dip, 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 dip. It's a Sunday. It's a fun day. It's time to improve your English. And here he is. It's Mr. Steve. Hello. Good afternoon or good morning, if it's good morning or good evening, mm -hmm. wherever you are. Mr. Duncan, here we are again. I've been outside washing the car because uh, it's filthy, because there's so much mud on the roads and it's been wet. And I've been going up country lanes and you should have seen them as about half an inch, probably about a centimetre of mud all up the wheel arches, underneath the wheel arches of my car. And I had to take it all off. So, you, so your car is, was very muddy. It was covered in mud all in the wheel arches. I sprayed it with a hose to get it all out. And there's a pile of mud on the drive now. There's something I've noticed whenever... When, whenever people clean their cars, there is always a good reason for it. And I've realised why why Steve has cleaned his car. And that's because we're going to see your mum, aren't we? But they're not going to see it, though, because we're going to be in a multi-storey car park. Oh, OK. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, I haven't cleaned it for that reason this time. But usually, you are right, people tend to clean their cars when they're going to see some relatives, some friends, because they want to impress them. And in fact, <laughs> our neighbours this morning, yes. I mean, it was cold, wet, damp outside. You wouldn't really think of going outside to clean your car, but they did. He was cleaning his car and uh, we thought, hmm, they're going to see somebody. Hmm. Sure enough, about an hour later, they drove out in their Sunday best, as we say, their best clothes. Looking very smart. Looking very smart because on Sunday, that's when you normally dress up smartly, go out for a meal or something traditionally. Well, in the, not anymore. It's and it's do. for church it's, as well. Yes. You go to church, wear your best clothes, your Sunday best. So we just still use that expression when we see people going out dressed in their best clothes at a weekend or you're in your Sunday best. Yeah. Well, at any time of the week. Uh, in fact, you could still say, oh, you, you got your Sunday best on. Mm. Uh, and so we saw they're obviously going out to see some friends or relatives, going for a meal, probably. Does, Am does, I talking clearly enough, Mr Duncan? Does anyone, does anyone still say Sunday best? Yes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Oh, don't... you're in your Sunday best. Who are you going to see? The Queen? <laughs> are you it, off to church? If it, if it, if it was the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the mid-19th the mid century, maybe. Uh, okay. They do around anyway. here, though, don't they? Anyway. Yes. OK, then. Anyway. <laughs> we are here today. Steve, uh, as usual, Steve was outside and, and, and he came rushing in. And as usual, you leave so little time before you come on. And there you were outside the studio door. Still putting your clothes on. Well, I don't know. Mr Duncan, the thing is, I've got lots of things to do at the weekend. You know, being the man of the house. Well, wait I've there. I've got to do the cleaning, wash my clothes, get ready for work tomorrow. I've got presents to buy for people at the moment. I've lots of things to do. And I have to fit in gardening, cleaning cars, all this sort of thing. Cars? Because, well, I've only got one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How many cars have you got? Because if I don't do it before, the sh if I don't do the things that need daylight before we do the show then I've got no chance afterwards because it's dark at four o'clock. But, but you do realise that you're, you are actually on holiday now? Not, well, not till Tuesday. Yes, but, but technically. I'm oh. not doing a lot tomorrow. If my boss is watching, I'm not doing much tomorrow. Don't expect a lot out of me. Technically, Steve <laughs> has now started his Christmas holiday. Talking of Christmas, Christmas is coming. And the geese are getting fat. Christmas is on its way. And we've got the Christmas lights outside the house now. 
and we will also be putting the Christmas tree up today. We we have had so many messages, by the way, emails. Really? Well, first of all, we had a lovely message from. There it is on the screen now. Ooh. A lovely message there. Now, I think that is I want to say that is from Sue Cat. I think that's from Sue Cat. I apologize if, if I've got that wrong, but I think that is actually from Sue Cat. Where are you going? I'm trying to read it, Mr. Duncan. Yes. I wanted to show Ooh. you and Mr. Steve my little flowers, my little. Now, I think that's a caviar. Is that how you pronounce it, Steve? It could be a, a caviaria. Uh, yes, as who uh, we, we're assuming it's Sue Cat, it's a succulent. So it's a, a bit like a cactus in a way. But they've got sort of big, juicy, thick leaves that store store the uh, store the water, and they have these lovely flowers. Uh, and uh, as you can see, you can see some sort of thick sort of leaves there, uh, just in the background. I think they're related to cacti, uh, and they they they've got this ability to store water so yes. that when it's in drought conditions. They can carry on flower, flowering and growing. Well, if but you look, they do have lovely flowers, and that's a beautiful flower. Yes. Well, you can actually see in the in the background there is the cacti. Yes. So that that is the main part of the plant. So oh, yes, it, but there is also something else. Can you see something else in that picture? It looks like an out of focus Father Christmas, and it is. And there is Sue Cat with her. Lovely little Santa Claus. Uh, now, I suppose it's a little statue in the garden and it looks very friendly with the little cuddly teddy bear. But I've noticed that Sue Cat is a big fan of Christmas as well. So I think that Sue Cat, Sue Cat gets very excited at Christmas also. Now, we also had a message earlier. Oh, sorry, Sir Steve. Can I mention something? OK. About Christmas. Uh, and about Father Christmas, I was in seeing one of my customers this week. OK. And as we know, children go to see Santa at they, the local store. They do. They sit on his knee. They sit on his knee. He gets presents. The parents queue with their children to see Santa sit on his knee and in his grotto. Did you know that in this country, I don't know whether it's in other countries or not, there is now a Santa for pets? I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Uh, if you've got a dog, I think it's for dogs, you can take your dog to Santa. There are special dog or pet Santa events where you take your dog along and these customers were getting all excited because one was tel telling the other one at the weekend about how they took their dog to Santa. They got a picture of the dog sitting on Santa's knee and apparently you can buy some special dog wine and a frozen meal for the dog which you put in your deep freeze and you cook it for your pet on Christmas Day. Now I'm not making this up. This is an actual thing. So we have we now have we don't just have Santa Claus for children. We now have Santa Claus for pets. Pets. And there are several events going on around this area. Apparently, they were all saying, well, there's one going on at such and such a place. Oh, I'm going to take my doggy along. To see Santa Claus. To see Santa Claus. They do realise that their dogs don't realise that, that there is a Santa Claus or they don't even know what human beings are. Now, I probably seem a bit mocking because I would, Im I think children know what Santa. Dogs certainly do not know <laughs> well, who Santa Claus is. <laughs> children, are, children are human beings. Yes. Dogs are not human beings. Be a bit of a shock if you just saw Santa Claus and took your child along, and you ended up getting a frozen dog dinner. I mean, what next? <laughs> ne ne the next thing we'll be having are, are, are pet weddings. So maybe next door, next door's dog will get married to an another dog that lives up the road and maybe the, the two dogs will get together and they'll have a wedding. So so maybe in the future, as things seem to be going, that we might end up having weddings for dogs because we have a Santa Claus now 
Well, you for... have funerals for dogs. Yes, you have funerals for dogs and cats. You can get that now. I know, as somebody pointed out, Sue Cat says, I love animals, but Santa for dogs, it's a little... Well, it's basically a money-making marketing exercise, which is uh, playing on the fact that, as you've mentioned before, people now see their pets more like children or like humans rather than animals yes they treat them like um, like human beings which you can understand because you can fall in love with a dog a pet <laughs> yes but, uh, i don't know maybe i'm wrong but maybe how, i'm old-fashioned but how far are you going to take that steve how far do, do you you take it with your pet i mean may, maybe in the future i was just talking about pets marrying each other but maybe in the future maybe human beings will marry their pet. Uh, yes, Lilia says, I think that's illegal. Uh, Lilia <laughs> says, Santa for pets, for people who got tired of just dressing up their pets and need something more than that. Well, yesterday we were in Much Wenlock at the smoothie having a delicious cup of coffee. Yeah. We're hoping we, if we keep mentioning this business and keep filming it, we will eventually get free coffees. Yes, well, <laughs> we're hoping to get free coffee, you see. Free coffee from the smoothie in Much Wenlock. The old smoothie in Much Wenlock Town Square. It's a lovely place. They do excellent coffee, very friendly staff, and please give us free coffee. We'll tell them next time we've been in that uh, 50 people came from... A country somewhere. A country. Watch you <laughs> from France, and, uh, and and they all visited the old smoothie. And we're going to get free meals at the Copper Kettle before long. But we went into the old smoothie yesterday, I digress, and we saw somebody with a dog. Yeah. And they had dressed it in a Santa outfit. Well, it was wearing a jumper. A jumper, a Santa jumper. And it had Santa Claus on it. And Santa it was, Claus. But it was a very cute dog. It was a very, what type of dog was it, Mr. Duncan? I'm not sure. I think it was one of those strange mixtures of, of oh. maybe a poodle and something else, because this is what oh, we do yes. now. We, we, we change the dog according to what the person wants. So maybe you want you want a dog with a long nose, but a short tail and very long legs so you can find one of those because they've all been bred to, to look like look like that or look like something else it so. was like a, a scotty dog wasn't it yes a scotty dog mixed with a poodle but it had these strange teeth it had, yes it had this this very strange underbite it was like, oh. yes it was a very odd looking dog can i show you on the camera wait there <laughs> let me just show you Yes, that's it what, just looked like that. That's what the dog looked like all the time. Anyway, I can see that's not very good for your neck on the camera doing that, Mr Duncan. It's very it's good. very flattering. It's very good exercise. Ten minutes away from three o'clock, we have so many things to do today. We have. So, so many things. We are also going to take a look at something that we bought yesterday whilst in town. And I think it might be... We couldn't believe it when we first saw it. It might be the most tasteless game ever. Now, you know you can buy games to pass the time away, like Monopoly and Scrabble. Yes. And and other things as well. Plink and plonk. You can play chess or drafts. Snakes but, and ladders. But uh, have you ever played this game? Pass... <laughs> Pass the bomb. Pass the bomb. Or I would say pass the bomb. Pass the bomb. Can you believe it? There, there is a game in this country. In this country called Pass the Bomb. I'm not joking. No, that's a real game. It's a real game. And we saw this yesterday. We found it in a charity shop. And, and look at this. It actually has inside a real bomb. There, you can see there is a bomb inside. Uh, we, we we haven't played the game yet. In fact, we don't even know we don't know how to play the game. We need batteries. I think uh, this game, I'm guessing, is probably 1980s. No, it's a very old game. I don't think it's that old. I do not think that you could actually market a toy, a game called Pass the Bomb, anymore after. 
or the acts of terrorism that we've had over the last uh, few you, you, years. You say that in such a lovely uh, way. The the acts of terrorism. Well, it would be seen as very um, insensitive. Yes. If you were to market a product, a game called Pass the Bomb, uh, I don't think it would uh, be allowed to be put on sale. I think there would be riots in the streets well, we, and people we thought, commenting. Yes, we thought it was a real... We thought, no, we thought it was a fake game. We thought it was something that was put there for a joke. So so we, we looked at it, then, then then we went back to it. Ooh, and, two cats going. And and I, I just couldn't believe that there was a game called Pass the Bomb. It was very, very shocking. Sue Cat's going. Oh, my brother is coming to visit me. Let's put the live chat on the screen. My brother is coming to visit me. I'll watch this later. OK, Sue Cat, see you later. Don't go too far and have a nice afternoon. Well, I was reading this. What are the what are the rules on, on the game Pass the Bomb? I don't know. Uh, you have to apparently <laughs> you, you, you put some batteries in it. You set it. And then you have to answer a question, mm. and if you haven't answered it, uh, you have to answer it within a within within a I think it's thirty seconds. Well, I would imagine you have to answer it before the bomb goes That's off. That's it. And if you manage to answer the question, you can reset it, pass it to the next person. They have to ask a question, and, if, and eventually, it's a difficult question. You can't answer it, and boom. Yes, we can. <laughs> we we understand what what I bomb. Think... Yes, we understand, Steve. We've got to play this game. Not today, though. Because I don't know how to play it. Maybe we'll stay away from uh, religious institutions. We won't play it with... The <laughs> oh, that's just... You've what? got to see the funny side of life, haven't you, sometimes? You've got to see the funny side of life. Because uh, in tragedy, in tragedy, you have to find a little bit of humour in order for... to be able to cope with it. Are you OK? No, I'm just saying. We saw a comedian, a, a comedian that we both like very much, called Ricky Gervais. Okay. And uh, he said that sometimes he gets criticised for uh, making jokes about tragic things or insensitive, insensitive things. Well, he says he makes jokes about religion, death, uh, and and uh, sexism and political correctness. So he he makes jokes about all of these things. And 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 as he said, sometimes you need to have some humour in those tragic events in order to get through it. Mm. Uh, and as long as you don't upset too many people, yeah. then uh, which we will try not to do today. Yes, well, uh, you're not trying very hard. <laughs> I have been known to uh, touch on a few sensitive subjects. Yes. Have I not, Mr Duncan? You have. Uh, so, so maybe this might offend a few people, but we couldn't believe it. We, <laughs> we had to buy this just to show it to you because if we told you you might not believe it actually exists. So we, we bought this yesterday from, from one of the local charity shops. So I thought I thought it was rather unusual, to say the least. I know. Oh, we had a lovely response this week, by the way. Did we? To the video we showed last week of, of you and I playing in the snow. Like Se a couple of kids. 17 years ago. A lot of people said how lovely it was to, to see to see you two playing all those years ago so yes and so I thought I would show a little bit more so this is us once again in the snow playing way back in 2001 2001 this is Steve well mr. Duncan uh, did anybody say that we hadn't aged a bit no everyone said we look really old now oh I'm about to do a snow angel Steve look I'm doing a snow angel. Oh, you like doing a snow angel. Snow angel, 17 years ago. So that's 17 years ago. Well, I'll tell you what's significant about that, oh. Mr. Duncan. I, I was hoping you wouldn't, because I was trying to do something. <laughs> so well, se <laughs> I'm actually holding the camera there, Mr. Duncan. That's yes. something you've never allowed me to do since then. Yes, so there I was doing a snow angel. That was 17 years ago, and here, I'm doing it one year ago.
talking of snow... It is Sunday, it's a fun day, it's time to improve your English with Mr Steve and also me, Mr Duncan. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are going to put the Christmas tree up today, aren't we? We're going... We're going into, into the living room and there it is. So we will be in there soon. I've just noticed it's getting dark, so we might have to put, put the lights on oh, a little... Really? A little brighter but we will be in there putting up the Christmas tree and if it's anything like last year it was pretty chaotic last year do you remember chaotic yes there was a lot going on last year mr. Duncan and uh, but it was exciting mm. uh, and uh, I was commenting on all the all the, uh, the 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 chats coming in from people yes uh, because I don't think I'd really commented on that before or seen it before and so it was a bit exciting for me. Now, of course, I'm used to it. Mm. Uh, but I've also got and I've found some words some phrases, some idioms connected with, well, vaguely connected with Christmas. Yes. That to, will hopefully slot in. To do with trees or the decorations or the things that oh. we do at Christmas. You're giving it all away, Mr Duncan. Things like that. So that, that is just to whet your appetite. So we're not just putting the tree up, we're also educating at the same time. <laughs> it's about time we started. And I'm talking, have you noticed, Mr Duncan, I'm making a special effort to talk slowly and not to rush my words. <laughs> so that because we get lots of complaints, well not lots, a few, no. yes. that I'm not clear enough. And when I get excited, I start to talk faster and faster you do so i'm trying not to do that mr duncan i'm trying to talk very clearly this is true that steve does get very excited i've got something that's making me excited right now because we have had a video sent to us <gasps> by maria another video maria giovanna and One we are regular viewers we are going to take a look at it right now Good morning, Mr. Duncan. Uh, I'm Maria Giovanna La Rosa. I live uh, in uh, Catania, a town in uh, Sicily, south of Italy. Uh, here's the place where I live. As you can see, I live uh, in a flat and uh, near a very busy street. You can hear the noise. And uh, this is the area around my house as you can see in the distance we have the sea but uh, on the left you can see uh, a beautiful hill that is a naturalistic uh, area where uh, birds uh, different types of bird insects and uh, rabbits live because they're there is a little river which flows through it and uh, fortunately I, my house uh, uh, don't, uh, doesn't look uh, on the street uh, that's uh, where there is so many traffic and noise but uh, as you can see uh, I can watch the be this uh, beautiful area that's uh, uh, less noisy this uh, side of the house bye bye for now thank you Maria and it's always nice to see your videos if you would like to send your video in then feel free to do so we are live today. Mr. Steve is here. Did you enjoy that? I did. Uh, and uh, I was listening to Maria there. Very clear English. Uh, uh, Maria, where are you, Maria? Is Maria on today? Maria, I think I saw Maria Giovanni on earlier. Italy, perhaps? I think I think it is Italy. Uh, so forgive me if, if, I, if I seem as if I've forgotten. <laughs> In fact, I have. 
Uh, but what? Yes, you don't live. Well, you've got a lovely view, is what we would say. And I, is that if that's your house, you've got a lovely balcony, uh, all the trees and the birds, and there's a river in there as well. I and heard Maria say lots, lots of wildlife. Lots so of wildlife. I, I could I could hear a slight noise from the road, but it sounds as if you have a nice outlook because you have a river mm. nearby. There are lots of uh, wild animals, including rabbits, which, rabbits, which we don't get many of around here. We, we get the occasional rabbit in the garden, but but not very many because uh, rabbits tend to be very shy. Yes, they think we're going to eat them. <laughs> so they have a good reason to, to, to feel shy of human beings. I think so. So thank you very much, Maria, for that. Back to the live chat, because Steve loves the live chat. Sicily, Sicily, says Maria. OK, thank you very much for that. And I hope you enjoyed that. So if you would like to send something in, you are more than welcome to do so. The email address is underneath this video. We also have something else. There are so many things to do today. In a moment, we are going to put the Christmas tree up, but can I just say that tomorrow there will be a special video being uploaded onto YouTube Ooh. and made public. Who remembers quite a few years ago we made a video of a very famous song called Deck the Halls. And that was we made that I think it was about nine years ago. Nine years. Well, I have taken the original footage. I have taken it all and I have re-edited it. I've made a new version of it and I will be revealing it tomorrow. So to give you an idea of what happens in the video, there it is. So that is a screenshot of a video I will be posting tomorrow onto YouTube. It is a special version of a well-known song called Deck the Halls. It has a lot of funny moments courtesy of Mr. Steve, also myself. And you can see Mr. Lomax as well. So that will be available tomorrow. I will make that video public tomorrow. So you will be able to see that uh, a new video, a new version of an old video from many years ago. Ah, so now you're you know. so clever, Mr. Duncan. Well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> you're good at the editing, editing side of things. Uh, I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if I'm good at it. I, I try my best anyway. I think you are. You're quite technically clever with, the, <laughs> with, with, with that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, it's made easier now from the donations we had earlier this year for your new computer. Was that this year for your new computer? That was way back in February. Wow. So be because because I needed a new computer, I had a fundraising event and I raised half of the money. And, yes. and I put something towards it and you put something towards it and we were able to buy a new computer so we could run the live stream because it takes a lot of technology to, to make this appear on your computer screens. And to your be... old computer was too <laughs> slow. It couldn't cope with all the information that had to go through yes. it. Isn't that right? Also, it, also it's, it started to, to break down all the time. <laughs> So it had to go, unfortunately. So can I say thank you to those who did donate uh, in response to my request? And also, of course, you are more than welcome to make donations anyway as we come towards the end of the year. And I will be heading into 2019 and we will carry on doing this, I think. Well, do you want us to? <laughs> I'm good for it if you are, Mr. Duncan. Steve says I'm he's game. He will do it. I will do it. And if you want more of this, then feel free. You can make a donation. There is the address now going across the screen. Very simple. And all donations will be gladly accepted. It will help this to continue. Now we are going to do something very special. We are going in to the living room. First of all, I will show you something and then Steve will disappear. He will go into the living room and we will set everything up. I'm going to change my top on the way in. Yes. Because this is good. it's very hot in that room because the fire's going. Yes. So don't think oh it can't be live because Mr. Duncan uh, Mr. Steve's wearing a different top. Uh, I'm going to change it. It's definitely on live. My way through because this is too hot 
Uh, so I'm going to start stripping off now, Mr. Duncan. No, don't reveal my chest. No, Steve. A powerful, manly chest to the world. I don't want the viewer to get too excited, you see. I don't want to, yeah. you know, amorous advances. Yes, OK. And I'll do it right, right. Up. Just come away from there. It, 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 he gets so close to this big table that's in front of us and it, it, he'll, he's almost lying on it. <laughs> I'm just sort of leaning, you know, so, relaxing. OK, off you go, Steve. We're going right. to show something that relates to Christmas. This is a Christmas poem that relates to this time of year. The Christmas bells ring out again For many this time is such a pain Crowds rush to the shop in one big flurry Those gifts to buy cause so much worry The kids yell I want a Star Wars toy this year The parents sigh those toys are too dear The child screams I want one, I want one so there The mums and dads give in through despair so off to the store the parents trudge A toy for their child they can't begrudge They march to the shop, that toy they must get Knowing fully that purchase will get them deeper into debt But that seems not to matter, for there's more to this season To spend all that money, there is a good reason For on Christmas morning beneath the sparkling tree a child opens their present, smiling with glee. The family later sit for a hot turkey lunch. The parents forget all about the credit crunch. This day is for laughter, smiles and cheer. With Grandad on the floor, yes, he's had too much beer. So why all this trouble each and every year? The stress and the rushing, the reason is clear. A child's loving smile, given so tenderly. Oh, and Christmas spending is good for the economy. Are we still on? I hope so. I hope you enjoyed that. A little poem there to help <laughs> get us in the festive mood. Now, I'm hoping Mr. Steve will be in the studio uh, or should I say in the living room. This this is the problem when it's live. Now, we don't have lots and lots of people helping us do this. There's just me and Mr. Steve. So not only am I the presenter of this live stream, I also have to do all the technical things. So what I'm going to do now is to see if I can hear Mr. Steve. So in a moment, I'm going to talk to Steve. I'm hoping that he won't be shouting. I've already told him not to shout if he gets close to the camera. So I'm going to put the microphone up, first of all, for Steve. And then I will put Mr. Steve on. Wait, wait a moment. Hang around. This is so professional. <laughs> Can you hear me? Are you there, Mr. Duncan? OK, I think we have Mr. Steve on and there he is. Can you hear me, Mr. Duncan? Yes, we can hear you. Loud and clear? <laughs> yes, very loud and clear. Do you want me to get any closer to the camera? No, you don't have to shout. As you can see, I've poured myself a glass no, of wine. You're shouting. I'm talking normally, Mr. Duncan. I'm talking perfectly normally. He always shouts at me. He always says I'm shouting. Uh, I've poured myself a glass of wine because this is what you do when you put up your Christmas tree. Actually, oh, it's not really wine. It's actually grape juice. There's no alcohol in it at all because I've got to drive later. So, Mr. Duncan, it's all getting exciting here. Can you see me? Is it light enough? Shall I move away over into the corner? And uh, maybe just to test the sound, shall I do a twirl? <laughs> you, you look amazing, by the way. I've just thought, actually, you know that um, uh, I, we were talking about have, uh, pet Santa Claus. 
Yeah. Taking your dog along to Santa. We, we've still got these spiders. I wonder if we could take these tarantula spiders to uh, this pet Santa Claus and whether he would let the spiders sit on his knee <laughs> uh, and, and then maybe he'd give us some live crickets to feed the spiders. Did we say one of them's died? Did we tell people about that? No one knows that one of the spiders has died. But one now of them that, died? Now, yes, now they do. Yes, yes, we did. We did lose one of the spiders. It did die. But it's... then the person that owns them should... should bloody hurry up and pick them up i know he said uh, can you look after them for three weeks and we've had them about eight months we've had them 10 months 10 months yes we've sort we've, of we've we had haven't... these stupid spiders for 10 months i don't want them anymore they're a pain one of them has died one of them has died oh, yes we, uh, what did you do mr duncan uh, you uh, you cremated it on the fire didn't you well on i wasn't going to mention there, that you cremated it i wasn't i wasn't going to mention that steve well, at first, we weren't sure whether it was dead or not. So I asked my friend, uh, it's curled up in the corner of the tank. Is it dead? And he said, uh, don't throw it out yet. It could be molting. Uh, <laughs> but then the smell after a few days gave us a clue that maybe it wasn't alive yeah. anymore. You know what gave it away? It was it was the smell of rotting flesh and, and the fact that the spider was was going a very strange green colour. So, you know, it was it was those things. So it hadn't shed its its skin. It had actually shed its soul. <laughs> if you believe in that sort of thing, Mr Duncan, do you think spiders have souls? No. If humans have souls, though, then do spiders, do dogs, do cats, sheep? I don't horses? know. What, what a strange question. I know. It's nothing to do with putting up the... Well, it's sort of vaguely religious and we are putting up a Christmas tree. Yes. Uh, we've, you we've... Know, celebrating uh, uh, Christ, the birth of Christ. <laughs> well, I had you... to think then, was it the birth or the death? I was oh. like, <laughs> that's Easter. I always you... get those two mixed up. Are you OK? Are I'm you fine. Sh... I this, this isn't alcoholic and yet I think it is so therefore I'm getting a bit tiddly and a bit drunk are you are you sure that isn't real wine absolutely not there's no way for you to tell of course but it is just uh, grape juice so I'm getting all the benefits of red wine uh, without the uh, without the disadvantages which is the oh <laughs> where did you come from so here we go here we go here, here we go. go the annual the annual Putting up the Christmas tree. That even smells like alcohol. It's not. Are you sure that's not alcohol? Mm. I'm, I'm hoping it is, so I can have some. Have you farted, Mr Duncan? Have I? Have you? No. Yes, you have. I have. He's farted in the studio, and uh, he's come in here, and he's dragged, brought some of the smell with him. I have not farted. Yes, he has. I have not farted anywhere. Right, let's get on with this. We haven't got yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, can, can we get rid of this? Because I have a feeling this will end up being spilled everywhere. What are you talking about, Mr. Duncan? I'm perfectly all right. Oh, right. Uh, where's the Christmas tree? Is it in here? Is it in this big box? <laughs> right. The Christmas tree is in this box. Right. we better hurry up, haven't we? i tell you something. I'm already regretting this. <laughs> ah, do you remember what happened? Yes, last year, Mr Duncan, I got very excited and things went all, all awry. Yes. And things go all awry, it means they don't go according to plan. I said to Steve, I said, whatever you do, don't, don't keep shouting. And... <laughs> I'm just putting it round the other way. <laughs> Mr Duncan's got upset now. <laughs> We're putting up the Christmas tree. So let's get on with it, Mr Duncan. <laughs> Otherwise... We've only got about 40 minutes left. Shall I talk about some words connected with trees and putting up the Christmas tree? <laughs> Mr Duncan's gone back into his studio. I don't know why. Come back, Mr Duncan. <laughs> Come back. I've got some words here connected with trees. Uh, so, shall I go through those? What do you want me to do, Mr Duncan? Mr. Duncan, where are you? I think I've upset Mr. Duncan. He doesn't like me fiddling with his hat. So, I just, <laughs> oh, is I he just, back? I just wish he wouldn't act like a, like a mental person. <laughs> well, you couldn't say that uh, I was... Uh, that, well, well, here we go. Here's one. Let's go with this one already. Sorry, <laughs> what, what, is, what is happening? <laughs> nothing, Mr. Duncan. Absolutely nothing. Um, 
Are we going to put this tree up or not? Well, show, show some of these words that you've worked for 15 minutes. Christmas tree. Barking up the wrong tree. Barking up the wrong tree. This means to waste your time and efforts. Yeah. Uh, pursuing the wrong path. Yes. Thing or assumption. Yeah. To make a wrong choice. Barking up the wrong tree. For example, you won't solve the problem with that approach. You are barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Why are you standing like this? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? The police kept on questioning the same person. This is how... But they were barking up the wrong tree as they didn't commit the crime. Barking up the wrong tree but means... I want people to see it. Pursuing the wrong thing. That's what I just said. Stop blaming me for everything uh, about your affair with the boss at work. It's not my fault. You're barking up the wrong tree. PTO, I've written on here for some reason. Where does it come from? It comes from the, the US, the US of A, uh, <laughs> hunting dogs. Uh, if, you, if you hunt dogs or if you, dogs are after a prey and they catch a scent, uh, but sometimes they get it wrong and they think that the prey is by a, by a tree and they all start barking around this tree. In fact, it's long since gone somewhere else. And so they're barking up the wrong tree. So if you get something wrong uh, and you, somebody might say to you, you're barking up the wrong tree, it just means that you're wasting your time and efforts, you, you, you're off, you're not quite accurate uh, with the thing that you're pursuing. Barking up the wrong tree. I think I've said that enough time. Money doesn't grow on trees. Does it, Mr Duncan? I often say that expression to Mr Duncan. Uh, money doesn't grow on trees is an expression that is meant to make somebody try and understand the effort and the hard work that is required in earning money and, and not to spend it on stupid things uh, because it's a waste of money. You often say this expression to children. Money doesn't grow on trees because if your child is constantly asking you for new toys, you might say to them, look, You've had enough toys. Uh, money doesn't grow on trees, so you'll just have to use the ones you've got until I've got my next wages in. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, that's... Uh, uh, please stop asking me for another new computer game. You've already had four. Money doesn't grow on trees. So you might say that... Uh, uh, now, apparently, this originates from an expression... Well, from the fact that trees are... Uh, uh, the leaves on trees, the fruit on trees, grows very easily and there is very little effort required to do it. So, uh, obviously, money is more difficult to come by uh, than fruit on a tree and therefore, if you say money uh, doesn't grow on trees, it means that you haven't got much of it and you don't want to spend it on stupid things. And I'm always saying that to Mr Duncan. He's saying, oh, can I have some more chocolate? Uh, can I have an, another new Vostok watch? And uh, I have to say to Mr Duncan, <laughs> hold on a minute, money doesn't grow on trees. What the hell are you talking about? Money doesn't grow on trees, Mr I've, Duncan. I never ask you for anything. I know, he doesn't. He's never asked me for a thing. I don't ask people for money. I, well, I certainly don't ask you. Can I have a look at the live chat, Because you Duncan? haven't got much yourself. That's true. You know, Steve, Steve well, is poor. I'm he's, not poor. He's the poorest person in his family. No, I'm not. Mr Duncan, where is the live chat? I can't see it. And you know I like to engage with the live chat. He hasn't got two pennies to rub together. Two pe that If you haven't got two pennies to rub together, uh, that means you haven't got much money. That means That's you literally it. haven't even got two pennies to rub together. That's it. You, you, you might have one penny, but you've got nothing to rub it on. You can't rub it on another penny because you've only got one penny. I'm not poor. Not really. I've saved my money. I'm a saver. Mr. Duncan, this seems to be going very slowly. Are the viewers getting bored already? Because this tree, we're already 10, 15 minutes into the tree building exercise. And uh, that's one way of putting it. And yet I can't see anything happening. Oh, Mr. Duncan's got the box open. Shall I get the tree out? Because this, I, I'm getting frustrated now, Mr. Duncan. He's just, he's just not doing enough. 
Right, here we go. If you've just tuned in, I'm sorry. It's heavier than I thought, Mr. Duncan. Right, that's the first bit. Where's the base? That's, that is it. That's the, oh, base. that's the base. And that's the top bit, is it? Maybe we should have got this out ready. So, so this particular tree comes in two sections. So this is the top part, and the part that Mr. Steve is playing with is the bottom, the bottom part. Ooh. Shall I, shall I stick it in the hole, Mr. Duncan? You have to grab it, both hands. That's it. So now Mr. Steve will grab it with both hands and he will slide it into the hole. Done. That's it. Merry Christmas, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See you next week. That's Bye. it. It's, That's all done. it. it's up. That's it. That's it. We'll just leave it like that. <laughs> no, not really. Very good. Actually, this... Is it my imagination or is this really, really boring? Well, here we go. Now, what's this? Uh, this is a branch, isn't it, here, Mr. Duncan? This is a branch. So that's time for me to get out another expression. Go out on a limb. Go out on a limb. The limb being the branch of a tree. If you go out on a limb, you say or do something that is different to most people. You risk criticism. You get into a risky position yourself in order to help somebody. You go out on a limb. For example, the politician really went out on a limb when he suggested that people supporting Brexit were all stupid. Ah, he went out on a limb because just as if you were to go climbing on a tree and out on the edge of a branch, the limb of a tree. You mean the end of a branch? Yes, or just along the branch. The branch is like a limb, isn't it? The limb is another word for a branch. Yeah. Then you risk the, your weight breaking the branch and you crash down. So the idea here of using that expression in everyday life is that you are taking a risk yourself in saying or doing something. Uh, you might take a risk with a colleague at work who is maybe being late to work all the time and the boss is about to sack him, but you're supporting him and you're going out on a limb because it's risky for you. Uh, you might say to the, that particular person, I'm really going out on a limb for you here. You'd better sort out your lateness or I might get into trouble with the boss. So that comes from, it's another US expression, Mr. Duncan. And as I said, it means climbing trees and going out to the edge of branches and taking a big risk. And you can take a big risk with all sorts of things in life. You can say something and go out on a limb, say something that's not popular, or you can help somebody. Uh, and maybe they shouldn't be helped. Uh, and you might risk getting into trouble yourself by doing so. So to go out on a limb can be to do something risky. Yes. Say something risky. Like earlier when we showed the, the game that we bought yesterday, Pass the Bomb. That was a risky. We, could, we were going out on a limb. I'm going to look at the live chat, Mr Duncan. If it makes you happy. <laughs> Uh, while Mr. Duncan is uh, looking at the tree, I will look at the, night, the live chat. I am not able to come to the house to get the kids together for the first time in years, but I don't want to be in your arms and legs, but... Uh, oh, it's gone, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> How do I get the live chat back, Mr. Duncan? It's gone. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, I oh. think somebody's... I'm not sure what's going on here. <laughs> well, there's nothing new there. I'm going out on a limb and say you're a buzzard, <laughs> yes. says Frosty the Snowman. All oh, right, okay. What are you doing? I don't know how to get the live chat back. Yes, you just Duncan. you just do that. Okay, well I I don't know. You're are the you technical are, are you new to technology? Blue Thunder's here today. I donate for he. He will become a big spender. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. No, Mr. Duncan. Uh, 
Uh, there's no risk of Mr. Duncan being a big spender. Anyway, we don't we don't want uh, we don't want you to donate Blue Thunder. You're only you're, you're not old enough. You're not earning your own money yet. We don't want to take any all your pocket money away from you. Ah, uh, what are you doing, Mr. Duncan? I'm just well. You, you, <laughs> clearly, you don't know how to work a. A I'm fine here. I'm, I'm fine here. You don't know how to work. Mr. Steve is not a big spender. You're right there. I'm not. Uh, funny poem. I saw, talking of trees, there was an interesting article I listened to on the radio uh, when I was driving along, which I found very hard to believe. <laughs> uh, apparently, there's a lot of new research into the life of trees and they are now beginning to realise or understand that oh. trees uh, have, well, they may even, may, may have feelings. They may be able to feel pain. What a load of rubbish. Well, there's apparently a lot of research. This was on Radio 4, so it must be true. Radio 4 being one of the most trusted uh, media outlets in the whole of the UK. <laughs> I would say. You mean the BBC? The BBC's Radio 4. Anything they say on there must be fact. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and they had this scientist on, and apparently he said that uh, there's lots of research now that the roots of trees connected with fungi under the ground are able to communicate over vast distances uh, through their roots and through the fungi in the ground and communicate, for example... If uh, a deer comes into the forest and starts nibbling at the trees, it's able to sell, send a signal to warn the other trees. Now, what the other trees are going to be able to do about it, <laughs> I really don't know, because they, it's not like they could run away. <laughs> and apparently, they can tell the difference between different animals. So if, if a squirrel's running up the tree, there's one signal. If a human comes into the forest, there's a different signal. And apparently they were saying if trees are running out of water, you, they, 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 they're, they're screaming. Have you heard such a load of rubbish? Well, it's a horrible thing to... Horrible thought that if you go into your garden and start clipping your trees, they're all screaming. They're not. Trees don't have brains. Well, well, you say that, Mr Duncan, because yes. then the, 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 the interviewer the, the, said the, to the, this scientist... The, 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 well, OK, they might be sending out signals, but there's no central hmm. nervous system, there's no brain. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and the, the scientists said, well, they now think that there is a kind of brain... It's not the only thing. Uh, ..that's in the buds of the trees, <laughs> and they're somehow all connected together, these disparate uh, buds, and they're all connected into one sort of big brain. So is, is anyone still watching? This is Steve. I, I think he's either drunk or having a stroke. I'm not sure. It's one of them. Well, look, look what Lilla has said here, which is absolutely... Oh. What do I, <laughs> I just touched this phone. It all goes well. How do I get rid of that, Mr. Duncan? I don't know what you've done. I just, I just pressed it. There we go. It's gone again. Uh, keep. <laughs> you are. Oh, Mr. Duncan. Can I just say you are the most useless person? Here we go. Ever. Look what, look what Lilia says. Being among trees is also very healing, as we all know. That's the first and foremost reason why we love to walk in a forest from time yeah, to time. But that's the atmosphere. That's it's right. not. It's not trees. They're not whispering things to you. I think they are. I think they're communicating with us. Yeah. They're giving off pheromones, chemicals to make us feel good. Because they're saying, "Oh, don't chop us down, please. Don't chop us down. I'll make you feel all calm and nice." Well, I'm, I'm going. I'm bending further and further. This tree's coming on, isn't it? Well, you, because you, you don't know how to operate this phone. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Mr. Gre greetings from Brazil. Uh, says Ronaldo. Oh, okay. Oh, is that Ronaldo? <laughs> Ronaldo. What Red, the Reginaldo, the football player. Very close. So I think we've got a famous what? footballer. You, you, you on. scroll there. <laughs> it's okay, like Mr. Duncan. It's like trying to cha train a chimp. Uh, Duncan, did you make a series of lessons about pronunciation? Oh, so. <laughs> Pronunciation. Well, well, there's there's about there's about two million words in the English language, so it, it really depends. Some words are hard to pronounce, whilst others are very easy to pronounce. But listening to this, well, maybe not today because I don't know what this is. But normally I will talk about the way certain words are pronounced, 
And what are you doing, Steve? Frosty the Snowman has said scientists can put electrodes on plants and can measure. That's true. They've been doing that for a while. You don't tap. You just uh, drag. Okay. <laughs> measure their surface changes, and it changes depending on stressors, like insects, uh, insect attacks. Yes. So you can imagine if you go into a forest with a big axe or a chainsaw, yeah. you know, there's going to be some changes to those trees, measurable changes okay. in the, in the uh, conductivity across the leaves or something, maybe. Uh, but again, it's not, it's not like they're sentient. I don't think... Well, we do, do we know? See, I can't see the value of them being able to communicate under the soil because <laughs> they can't do anything. At the moment, I'm wondering whether Steve is sentient. I'm not <laughs> even sure if, if... I think maybe at the moment a tree is more intelligent than Steve. I think I've upset Mr Duncan. I did the unpardonable thing of touching his hat. Oh, the, 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 something about the tree here, you convert, can convert it into sound and you can hear them talk. Wow, I didn't know that. Dear me. Our house is in the forest, uh, says Pierre. Uh, oh, that must be lovely. All those animals coming into your garden every day. Hello, Olia. Yes, uh, Li uh, Lilia says, in physical terms, trees produce... Uh, phytocides, which are quite special chemicals that are healing uh, once you inhale them. Yes, well, if you walk through a pine forest, you can smell all the oils that are given out by the, by the, by the, uh, the trees. And in fact, for, for many years, scientists have wondered why there are these oils in the trees. Uh, and in fact, I remember we used to have a ficus, didn't we? We had a ficus plant in our garden, which is like a rubber tree rubber plant and they don't know why there is that white liquid in the trees or maybe it's something to do with communication uh, across uh, the forests uh, I think I should probably go and help Mr Duncan do you want any help Mr Duncan am I helping you 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 have been no help whatsoever greetings <laughs> from Berlin uh, says Vlad Vlad greetings from the UK yes because Mr. Steve and Mr. Duncan. We come in peace. Oh, it's gone. It's gone the wrong way now, Mr. Duncan. Yes. Oh, there we go. Watching you use technology is, is, is possibly the most amusing thing in the world. Do you have another word for us? Yes, before, I do. Before we lose every single viewer. Well, Sorry. that's all the tree ones. Okay. Uh, I was going to wait until we'd sort of got some baubles out before we're doing, uh, doing some other things. <laughs> we are a long way from that. We are, we are a long way from finishing this tree. This is a warning. We're going to get our baubles out a bit later on. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think anyone's going to see our baubles. Right. Can we make this go faster? Can we fast forward? <laughs> yes. Can, can I make my life go faster? So, so you know, I can, I can get to the end of it quickly. Mind your fingers. Oh, sometimes it pinches you. There we go, fast, fast track. So here we are, we are dressing the Christmas tree because we haven't put it up yet. We did this last year as well. We did a live stream last year. And there you can see Steve is now opening out the branches on the Christmas tree. I think this Christmas tree looks rather nice. It looks very, very authentic authentic very genuine something that's realistic is authentic so i think this tree is very authentic you're doing a good job there steve i always do a good job mr duncan now do you have uh if you celebrate christmas and you put a christmas tree up in your garden uh, in your living room or in your house <laughs> somewhere do you prefer an artificial tree made of plastic like this one here or do you prefer a real tree? Well, based on what I've just said, it wouldn't be a very good idea to go and chop down a living tree and put it in your living room knowing that that tree is going to be screaming <laughs> because it hasn't got any water. Imagine that, a slowly dying tree screaming in your living room. That's a, what a horrible thought. If that is true, that trees really can feel and sense things, then... Will it get to the point where 
even vegetarians. Vegetarians would have to commit suicide. They would starve to death. If you were a vegetarian and you found out that even trees could feel, what would you eat? What would you eat? Well, there's a question I'm posing for Christmas this year, Mr Duncan. He's vanished again. I don't know where he's gone. I'll have to carry on uh, opening the branches on this fake Christmas tree. Oh, Mr. Duncan, where are you? Come back, help me to decorate the Christmas tree. I know I've upset you by touching your hat, but please forgive me, all will be all right. I was out last night, as Mr. Duncan knows, I was in a carol singing concert, and uh, I sung a couple of solos, of course, as I do. Um, oh, Holy Night was one of them. In fact, it was a duet, a tenor and baritone duet. And it went down very well, I've got to say. The audience uh, just absolutely loved it. Oh, we got applause, we had to do an encore. It was marvellous. Um, but that's it, I was supposed to do one this afternoon. I wasn't going to be here this afternoon because I was I'm in another choir and they also had a, a concert this afternoon. Um, but I couldn't attend that one because I'm here doing the live show with Mr. Duncan. Well, looks like I'm on my own at the moment because Mr. Duncan's vanished into his studio. Maybe he's adjusting things, adjusting the sound, the light. Uh, maybe he's fiddling with a few knobs, things like that. Uh, but I'm hoping he'll come back soon and help me out because I'm feeling a bit desperate. Mr. Duncan, where are you? Right, here we go. Now this is very sparkly, isn't it? This is very sparkly. This is the uh, star that goes on the top of the Christmas tree. And uh, this is very glittery. Glitter, now. There's an interesting subject. Glitter is being banned in the UK uh, because apparently it is not environmentally friendly anymore. And they have decided to ban glitter on Christmas cards, uh, at sporting events where well, they throw all, glitter up. All of it. All glitter is now banned. So it's not just, it's not just some glitter or types of glitter, it's all glitter. All in glitter. In this country. Uh, and I think also it might be eventually the whole world. So there are lots of things that we are we are getting rid of, but they all seem to be very small things like straws that you drink through. Yes. And and cotton buds and now glitter. What about what about huge power stations which cause so much damage to the environment? What about those? So we're getting rid of all these tiny things because some of these things end up in the sea. But what about the power stations and all the countries that are using all sorts of polluting fossil fuels and things like that? <coughs> Steve, Steve. That's the glitter going up my nose. Steve just sneezed. I'm sorry about that. There's... So we're getting rid of glitter. Hold that up, Mr. Duncan. So I think, I think maybe Steve is allergic mm. to glitter. That. Brings to mind another expression, Mr. Duncan. Oh dear, you have to shout in my ear. All that glitters is not gold. It's a warning. It's a warning that because just because something is all attractive on the outside doesn't necessarily mean that on the inside it has any real substance or quality. Uh, Yes, so for it, that can mean an actual object. So it can be something like you go into a, a jeweler's shop and you see this lovely watch. It's all gold and sparkly. Uh, and then when you get it home, it seems very cheap, but then when you get it home, you discover that it's just some gold plating and underneath it's just plastic. Uh, but it can also refer to a person. So if somebody who's very attractive on the outside might not be very attractive on the inside, so they might not have a good character, or uh, they might be they might use you for your money. Uh, so you, you might 
you might uh, be attracted to somebody who's, who's married to somebody who's really attractive. You've married them because of their looks, uh, but, but, but unfortunately underneath they're not a very nice person. So all that glitters is not gold. Uh, so you can use that uh, for objects and also for humans. And did you know, Mr Duncan, mm -hmm. that expression is a very old expression uh, going back hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, but in fact, the modern use of it, all that glitters is not gold, uh, was first penned by Shakespeare. Ah, yes. Uh, but it was used many hundreds of years before that in different forms in Old English. Uh, so there we go. All that glitters is not necessarily... All that looks nice on the outside is not necessarily nice on the inside. Yes, I think Steve is a good example of that. Uh, Thanks a lot. Uh, do your live, oh. live chat. Shall I? I'm very good with the technology. Uh, oh, I can just see me now, Mr Duncan. Let's look for the live chat, if I can find it, that is. What are you doing? <laughs> you are just so useless at this. There we go. There you go. See? There you go. Oh. Every treasure is not gold. Yes, there we go. Ah, oh, I prefer... Anna says, I prefer the real tree, but not plastic. The plastic one is easier, so I don't have to kill anything. Is Yes, well, imagine, not only is the tree dying and screaming in the corner of your living room, but all the insects that were living on that tree. So you might have spiders, and you might have little flies, and they're all dying because you brought it inside the house. I don't, I don't think the tree will it's be screaming. And, you, do, you do come up with some weird things, though, because I don't think the tree is screaming in, in the corner of the room because it's dead by well, then. According to this scientist, it's screaming. What, what, for ages afterwards? Yes, because when you first... For example, if the, if the, if the tree is still green, then it's still alive. When does a tree actually die? Yes, does but, anyone know? So... But if you if you say that about trees, then then surely every single plant is alive. Well, that's it. I was saying well, while you disappeared into the studio and abandoned me. Yes. Uh, that uh, if if this is true, what are vegetarians going to do? They're going to starve to death because they can't even eat the plants if they're alive. Well, what what are humans going to do? <laughs> that's what I mean. Well, we'll be all right because. What about other animals that eat plants? Ah, yes, but they they don't really have a consciousness they don't have to animals don't count they're not having to make decisions based on whether they think this well, animal or this plant is is going to be upset if it gets killed or eaten yes I mean, but but then if it's just nature then just let nature take its course so if we need to build some i don't know some chairs and tables from wood then there you go that's it because we can't use plastic because plastic is bad have you noticed recently everyone's saying that plastic is bad? All right. Yes, Mr. Duncan is back. I think I upset him, but he's back. Well, you played... Uh, I don't know what it is about Steve today. He's, he's acting like a crazy person. He took oh my hat God. off, but I'm very sensitive about my hat. He's very sensitive. We and, know and, that now. And considering that, you know, you've, you've kind of known me for 30 years... I, I thought, just thought I'd have some. I just it was a spontaneous act. Yeah, it was a stupid thing to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna suffer later. Mr. Duncan's gonna make me pay. <laughs> oh well, there we go. Um, you missed the handwritten phrases. Well, I'm still doing. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> yes, uh, Guadalupe uh, Torres. You missed the handwritten. Well. I used to handwrite them, that is correct. Uh, but Mr. Duncan uh, thought that people couldn't read them. Uh, so I now have a little computer program and uh, I'm able to write them in. Um, so, well, maybe I'll do that again. Mr. Duncan sometimes does some handwritten ones. Uh, oh, I, oh, I've done it. I've got it's all gone wrong again. Oh, here we go. It's back, Mr. Duncan. It's back. Uh, do you have live trees available in England, says Frosty the Snowman. Yes, we do. Uh, in fact, there's a place quite near here that I go past every day on my, on my way to work. 
and there's a big field full of Christmas trees and uh, when they get to a certain height uh, they'll, uh, they will um, chop them down. Yep. I was trying to think then, what is a Christmas tree? What is the actual scientific name? What type of tree is it? I think it's a spruce. Maybe somebody can uh, enlighten me on that or correct me. Yes. I think a Christmas tree is a, is a type of conifer known as a spruce. If anyone needs enlightening, it's Mr Steve about a great many things. Talking of light, we haven't got a lot in this room, Mr Duncan. Oh, it's, there it's we fine. go. The light is perfect. They are the lights. How much longer have we got, by the way? We have, <laughs> we have 15 minutes. <laughs> We've got to get a move on, Mr Duncan, which Except means we've got to be fast. There is no way that we will get this tree finished in 15 minutes. Well, maybe we can just do it anyway, and then uh, people might like to stay on for later. I, I don't think so. Anyway, uh, see the light. See the light. Have you seen the light, Mr Duncan? <laughs> if you, I, see, I if you oh. see the light, it means that uh, you suddenly understand something that you had trouble understanding before. Uh, it also means that you start believing in religion <laughs> or in a particular way of living or acting or being. To see the light. Ah, I've seen the light. He's been a bad person for most of his life. But finally, he's seen the light and treats other people with respect. I didn't understand maths at all, but now I've seen the light. So you didn't understand maths before, now you suddenly do. You've seen the light. Uh, and this, of course, the, the, when we use the word light, uh, we can use phrases like light at the end of the tunnel. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. That means you can see the end of a long task uh, that you've been doing a long task. It's taken ages, it's like a big project at work. Uh, <laughs> And you just can't see where it's going to end. And then suddenly you get to a point and you can see the end in sight. Or you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, so that's that. So when we use the, when we use the word light, uh, it's been an expression that's used a lot uh, in, 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 over, over many years because it's really referring to the light from God. Because God is, is supposed to be the, the source of light. Uh, so when you refer to light in a lot of expressions, it's often referring to, uh, to God. Uh, Mr Duncan won't like that. So it's got religious, uh, religious uh, origins. Um, yes, I think that's... Anything else? Can you think of anything else to do with light, Mr Duncan? <laughs> How about... Here's a good one. I, uh, Punch someone's lights out. Mr. Steve today has made me so angry I want to punch his lights out. There you go. You could say uh, also a light at the end of the tunnel if you've been seriously ill and you're taking a long time to recover from an illness. You might say, somebody might say to you, are you feeling better? And you might say, yes, I'm starting to feel a lot better. I can see a light at the end of the tunnel. And of course, when we refer to light at the end of, of the tunnel in religious terms, <laughs> when people die, they often uh, and come. When people say uh, die for a few minutes, say they stop breathing, and but then they're brought back to life, uh, they often describe the experience as, uh, and they can remember it as going towards a light. So whenever you talk about going towards the light, it's it's something it's something good that's happening uh, because light is seen as good. Uh, connected with God and creation and all that sort of thing. Uh, there's something very strange happening to Steve. You haven't, you haven't become religious, have you? I've seen the light, Mr Duncan. I've yeah. seen the light. I think, I think you might need to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> a tinsel is very annoying, isn't it? Because it it's, uh, it's, uh, scratches your neck. Uh, now, of course, this is very bright and shiny. You can see why they want to get rid of... Do you think that they cut up this to make, uh, to make um, what did I say was going to be banned, Mr Duncan? You're on your own. It was glitter, that's it, so glitter. 
All these little particles of glitter are going into the oceans and blocking up the gills of fish, <laughs> apparently. Uh, so, and getting into all the little microorganisms and all the krill uh, that the fish feed on. And so we're, it's all coming back in the, in the food cycle. We're probably eating plastic all the time. See, when I'm thinking in, in the future, because of evolution, I think, I think the animals in the sea and all of the, the waste will eventually merge into one thing. So, so eventually you'll, you'll, have, you'll have plastic bottles, but the fish will be inside and they will they will become one and the same thing so so the fish and the bottle will become one and the same what do you think so mr steve is now putting the lights up i've taken over you you certainly have you've certainly taken something so this is a live stream something a little different today uh, even though steve has been very very annoying I'm going to be punished later. I will punish you later, definitely. What are you doing? I'm putting the lights on the tree. He has no idea what he's doing, by the way. Well, if I wasn't helping you, I'd be in the other room, Mr. Duncan. Yeah. I don't think it hasn't been, I need to unwind. Yes. <laughs> you need to do something. So oh, now Steve oh, is yeah. trying to put the Christmas lights on, but he's not doing a very good job. That's it. This, that's where I left off. That's it. There we go. I'll let Mr. Duncan carry on there while I have a look at the live chat <laughs> again. Uh, you have live trees. Yes, we do have live trees available. I think I've answered that one already. Uh, now, me and Ted. Oh, there we go. Fire is out. Yes, we need to put another log on the fire. We're so poor, uh, we can't afford to put another log on the fire. Well, we will do that later. I didn't put too many on this afternoon because it would be too hot here uh, on the live stream. Trees have been eagerly awaiting salvation, uh, says uh, Ram. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, people are getting impatient. Uh, Simona says, when are you going to decorate the tree and put the baubles on? Well, hopefully we will get that done very, very quickly. Um, it's not looking good so far. <laughs> We've got, we have five minutes. Well, hurry up, Mr. Duncan. Uh, hurry up and put those decorations on the tree. We have a plastic tree. Um, why kill a tree? Exactly. Well, what's worse for the environment? Uh, having to take oil out of the ground to make a plastic tree uh, or growing a real tree and cutting it down. I think a lot of people would probably say that as long as you replant the trees um, you can cut them down every year and that's probably better for the environment uh, than actually having to uh, get oil out of the ground and make plastic from it, but I don't know. Oh, uh, Dark OP says that they started following you on Facebook, Mr. Duncan. Oh, that's, that's good. Thank you very much. Uh, a plastic tree is dangerous from the, for the environment. Yes, probably on balance, a real tree is probably better. But then they're going to be screaming in the corner. Every time you look at that tree, you know you've injured it. It's thirsty and it's just dying in the corner. I love the way you're blocking... You, the block, you're blocking the tree. Oh, right, OK. There we go. It's nearly finished. <laughs> Why don't you create a group on Facebook, Mr Duncan, says Darko. See the light. Oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a song, I Saw the Light, by Hank Williams, apparently, says Jimmy. That's like the top of Steve's head, look. It's just as shiny. No, you can't, you can't actually tell the difference. They look the same. <laughs> Hello. Mm. Lydia says that we're going to take uh, this room to a new level with that Christmas tree in the corner. 
Are you an atheist, Mr. Duncan? Says Matrix. Well, um, I would say I'm an agnostic. Howard. Which is probably the worst place to be. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people think that agnostics really don't uh, sit on the fence and don't make their minds up. I've seen no evidence, and uh, I need evidence. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's my answer. Very good. Oh, Lewis says that I would make a good priest. Bless you, my child. Bless you. Almira says plastics will be banned by the EU. Well, interestingly enough, some supermarkets are starting to get rid of plastics in their packaging. I bought some tomatoes recently from Tesco's, and uh, they came in plastic, uh, sorry, came in a cardboard uh, packet instead of the usual plastic one. Uh, it did have a plastic film over it, but I think that was probably just... Uh, a plant-based, I uh, um, can't remember what you call it now, but not all the plastic that's covering things is derived from oil. Some of it is cellulose-based, which comes from plants. Uh, uh, oh, you've got your baubles out, Mr Duncan. Look at my balls. Mm, it takes a lot of courage to let people into your living rooms uh, and a big risk as well. We're going out on a limb this afternoon. <laughs> uh, I'm going out on a limb just letting Mr. Steve on the live stream. Yeah. People are laughing at you, Mr. Duncan, because you're just sort of not taking much care in the decorating. And uh, Guadeloupe says uh, uh, that that's how they decorate their tree as well. And uh, they're finding it. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing so hard. Why are you laughing so hard? Don't do that, Mr. Duncan. The tree doesn't deserve it. They're laughing, Mr. Duncan. Oh, <laughs> I see what you... I haven't been watching. No. I see what you mean. Is that what we've got to look at for That's the next it. two weeks, Mr. That's Duncan? It. The tree is finished. Well, we did only have five minutes. And the tree is finished. There it is. Look at that, Steve. I'm going to put the lights on now. Uh, shed light. If you shed... Oh, Mr. Duncan's turning the lights down. Well, we were running out of time, so Mr. D oh, there we go. I think there's too much tinsel covering the lights. Mm. If you, can you see that? If you shed light on something, it means you clear doubt That's about it. something. The Christmas tree is finished. Oh, well. Maybe we need the lights up just a little, Mr. Duncan. I feel as though I'm in darkness. Shed light on the situation. And there we are. Mr. Duncan, shed light on the room. In fact, that the expression to shed light on something comes from the ancient, uh, before electricity, people used to light candles and fires. Uh, and then when they did, uh, the rest of the room became bright and you could see what was happening and that you that was it, when you lit a fire or lit a candle you shed light that's what they used to say but of course today that expression is used to say that you, you're trying to uh, understand a situation so if you're not clear about something uh, then you you might go to somebody and say oh that project you've asked me to do a project at work uh, but I don't quite understand. Can you shed a bit of light on that for me? So can you explain to me what exactly you want me to do? Shed some light on something. Um, so it's used as an everyday... It provides previously unknown information so as to better understand something. Clarify or clear up a misunderstanding about an issue. Will you shed light on that for me, please? There we go. Here's an expression Mr. Duncan often uses to refer to me. The lights are on, but there's nobody home. Did you hear that, Mr. Duncan? I did. The lights are on, but nobody's home. That's a, a bit of an insult. You use that as an unkind insult to describe 
Well, I'm going to use the word stupid to describe a stupid person. Somebody who's not quite with it, not all there. So when the lights are on in a house, the lights are on, everything looks alive, but there might be not, nothing going on. So physically the person's there. You can see them. You can, they're breathing. They're warm to the touch. <laughs> but they might be in their own minds, thinking about something else. You might talk to them and they might, what, huh? what did you say? They might not come back with the right response. So some, when someone doesn't react because they're thinking about something else, then you say that the lights are on but there's nobody there. And Mr Duncan often uses that to describe me. Yes. I can be sitting there, he can be talking to me. But and uh, I don't really respond in the way that you would expect. But the thing is, sometimes you drift away. I drift off into my own world. Your mind is somewhere else. And, and, and sometimes I'm talking to Steve about something. And then I will say, so what do you think? And then you, you, you say, what? And you haven't been listening to anything I've been saying. Simona says the tree doesn't deserve it. Deserve what? Uh, I think it looks great. It's a work of art. Look at that. Amazing. A great idea to decorate the tree. Uh, Valerusia doesn't like it. She's laughing. Uh, oh, when you saw the light, it's already too late to take the pills. Oh, right, OK. Yes. Says Sergio. Ah, right. Are you referring to the, the, the experience of dying? <laughs> I feel, as if I, I feel as if I've died a little bit today, to be honest. Where is the star on the top of your tree? There, it's on top of the tree. Ah, oh, this is, this is delayed. <laughs> uh, Palmyra says, I'm the only person in the world that pronounces often with the T. Is that right, Mr Duncan? Do I often pronounce often in that word? I always pronounce often like that. Of course, if you're very posh in the UK, uh, the Queen would go orphan. Orphan. And how would you pronounce it, Mr Duncan? Orphan? That sounds like, that sounds like a child that has no parents. It, it does. Orphan. Often? I would say often. With well, I, the tea. I, I say often. Often. And the reason why I say often is because... You don't say soften. I was brought up to say often. If you make something soft, you don't soften it. You soften. Soften. Often. See? So there. The live chat's gone again, Mr Duncan. You... I the trouble with Mr Duncan's phone is there's so many buttons around the edge that you keep pressing the wrong one. There, there it is. Good. Why well, is that? Um... It's not difficult. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Please do not argue, says Lydia. Uh, uh, Bartleby says, I am also agnostic and sceptical. I don't think I'm the only person in the world that pronounces often as often. I can't be the only person. If I am, that means I'm unique. I don't know, it's just the way I was brought up, you know, one of those things. You are certainly unique. It's snowing. It's what? snowing. See? It's a snowflake. There's a snowflake on Mr. Steve. Snowflake. You see, there's a word. <laughs> Mr. Duncan's today's doings uh, aren't state of the art, I must admit, says Valentin. <laughs> snowflake is a, is a person who's very oversensitive to things. A snowflake. Snowflake. Uh, yeah. mm, maybe there's somebody else in this room who could be described as a snowflake today. I'm not a snowflake. Well, you got a bit upset when I touched your hat. Mm, you I would my, say that was a snowflake. You didn't touch my hat. You took my hat off. You broke the Ooh. big... You broke the rule. I didn't know about the hat rule. You were lucky. <laughs> you were lucky I didn't punch your lights I out. I think you are a snowflake, Mr Duncan. <laughs> this could be the last time you ever see me on the live chat. He's already threatened to take me away, you know. Anyway, we're going. Are we? Right. So there so we go. Th there is the tree. Let's just proudly show you the tree. Isn't that beautiful? And if you would like to, sh to send your Christmas tree photographs in, you are more than welcome to do so. So maybe you could send 
your pictures, your photographs of your Christmas tree, if it's a big one or a small one, I have a feeling that your Christmas tree will look better than this, to be honest. Although we did, we did do this in a rush. It was a bit of a rush. It was a bit of a rush. So are we going to redo it? We're not going to redo it. We're going now. I meant when we're not live on air. No, this is it. This is how it's staying for the rest of Christmas. Is that my punishment? I'm going back in the studio if you want to join me. Right, yes. Well, I'll say goodbye to everybody here and I'll see you back in the studio. Shall I change back into... I better change back into my, into my other shirt because this one doesn't look very good on the studio lights. So, see you in a minute. <laughs> You, you do realise we just saw you take your top off, Steve. You do realise we just saw you take your top off. Really? Yes. <laughs> Wait, but the camera's still on. You are so funny. There we go. I've changed. We're back in the Ooh. studio now. I hope I hope you didn't get too excited by the by the sight of Mr. Steve's bare flesh. Blimey, the things we do. The things we do to entertain our our friends around the world I'm not sure and teach if, English. I'm not sure if that's entertaining. So let's have one last look at the sad Christmas tree. <laughs> that is it. That's mm. all we, we could do today, unfortunately, because we didn't have much time, Steve. We didn't have a lot of time. So that's why. We are going now. I hope you've had a good time today because, well, <laughs> I'm, yep. not I'm not sure if I have. Take a good look. It's probably the last time I will be allowed on the live chat. <laughs> it might be the last time <laughs> you ever see Mr. Steve. I've broken the main rule, the only rule that I now know I must never break. Is to remove my hat. Or even touch it or go near it in any way, shape yeah. or form. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't know that. I would wanted to turn I wanted to make you look like a rapper. Yes. Because then I was going to make an, an expression that uh, rapping about wrapping presents. Oh, I see. Yes, you see. Ah, yes, you see. If you'd waited, all would have been revealed. But it's not the same spelling. <laughs> I know. It's a completely different ah, word. Well, that's what I was going to point out. It sounds the same, so, but the spelling's different. So a rapper who does all the street talk, that's R-A-P. But if you wrap a present, that's W-R-A-P. Yes. We're going now. Goodbye to everyone. Thanks for your company. I hope you've enjoyed whatever this was because I'm not sure what this was, to be honest. I might be covered in bruises next week. <laughs> no, 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 you won't be covered in bruises next week because you won't be here on the live chat. Oh, there we go. You see, I'm banned from the live chat. Well, we were thinking of this. I, this is something I mentioned last week to Steve. He got very upset because I was thinking of dropping Steve from the live stream and I think after today that may well come to pass now I'm just wondering whether Steve is doing this on purpose so maybe maybe Steve is being very naughty on purpose because he wants to go from the live stream maybe he wants to be kicked off I don't know I'm a bit of a live wire <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if this was amazing Eric says thanks for a great class I'm not sure if this was a class or even entertaining I'm not sure Pierre says it's a horrible tree but we hope you have a good time Sergio wants me to do it again before we go I better not Sergio yes you no. might see violence on the screen it won't be the violence it'll be the the language that I will be using. Anyway, we're going now. This is a very strange moment of time. See you next week, Steve. Well, really? Maybe. Are you going to let me back? Next week, it's Christmas Eve Eve. Right. Uh, well, we'll have to play that game, Pass the Bomb, live. Yes, yes. where is it? <laughs> I think. You've, you've got it. Here we go. So next week, we'll be playing Pass the Bomb. This is a real game. I don't know how to play it. But next week I will learn how to do it and we will play this next week. I'll tell you what's even more amazing is that it's from age uh, 12 upwards. So 12 year olds. <laughs> 12 year olds. The suggestion on the box is that 12 year olds can play this game. It's, it's, you know they say that they start early nowadays. Yes. And now we know what they mean. We're going now. Could you show us the tree redecorated by Mr. Steve? I'm sure that he will redecorate it. No, that's the way it's staying. It's going, it's going to be like that forever. 
I might not even take it down after Christmas. I might leave it there completely intact. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Simona. I don't think Steve wants to go. I'm going. I'm going to make it. Shall I make... Do you want a tea cake? I, I want a tea cake and a cup of tea. Right, OK. Please. It's very nice. We're going to have to do a lot more tonight to win Mr Duncan's favour. I think so. <laughs> Before we go, I will... Horrible sh things. I will show you the lights outside. Let's have a look at the Christmas lights. And then Mr Steve will be on his way. So, say your final words. Bye-bye. It's been nice for the last few years. <laughs> but Mr Duncan now is... I'm getting the sack. I'm being thrown out of a job. And uh, who knows whether I will ever be allowed to return. So the big question is, will Steve be here next week? Find out. Bye-bye. I love you all. Please don't forget me. Isn't that lovely? And the Christmas lights are now twinkling outside. It's time to say goodbye. For those who are wondering what was going on today, we put the Christmas tree up in the living room. We had to do it very quickly, though, unfortunately, because we didn't have much time. So that is the Christmas tree as it looks now. Although I have a feeling that later we might rearrange it so it looks a little better. But I think it looks quite nice, actually. Very, very festive. So we'll see you next week. This is Mr Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for following me today. I hope you've enjoyed this very weird event. And I will see you later. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Until the next time we meet here on YouTube. So ta for now. And don't forget, a new music video coming tomorrow.